our world. Let's just continue with this lecture, Hala Selassie and Tower of Babel. This um, will be part two. We only had a couple of minutes in the last recording, so we're going to try to catch up right here. We're in Isaiah chapter 13, and we are going into the symbolic meaning of Babel as we explain this particular lecture, Hala Selassie and the Tower of Babel. So we touched on Babel in the part one in the Afro-Semitic, the, the duality within the meaning of Babel as confusion as gate of God, and also the connection with the professing church or Christianity in the present time. Then now we're into Babylon as it's featured here in Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah chapter chapter uh, 13. And we were speaking on the symbolic usage of Babylon. One, continuing, in the prophets, when the actual city is not meant, when it's not speaking about the actual city, that, that means Iraq. Iraq over in Iraq is where ancient Babylon, that's the historical um, spot of ancient Babylon. So the, here it's not seen with the actual city, but the reference is to the confusion into which the whole social order of the world has fallen under Gentile world domination. Now, I, I find this to be extremely important for us, and we have been making the links at, properly as we should, scripturally, as well as from the evidence which is before us. Now, this right here, you probably know this as a, as a dollar bill. This is the one dollar bill. This is the God of the world. You understand? The God of Babylon, of, of modern Babylon. Now, you probably know this. You've probably seen this right here. And we had that Twilight Zone episode where he says, what does all this mean? The eye and the pyramid. That would be a good clip to actually put in roughly around here. But you see, Nuvo Ordo Seclorum. It has Nuvo Ordum, Ordo Seclorum which means New World Order, Nouveau Ordo Seclorum. Now, most people often put it as, you know, um, the New World Order, but you can also put it as NOS. You don't have people almost like NOS, like Nostradamus, NOS, the Nouveau Ordo Seclorum. Now, it's interesting because if we go to the Hebrew and to the serpent in the garden, we're going to go to the Nas, or the Nehaz, or the Kanas, the Nas, the brazen serpent, or the serpent in the garden is known as the Nas, you know, as well. But let's, let's continue right here. This is the example, a new coeptus, nuvo ordo seclorum. This right here is the proof of what the footnote here in the Schofield Bible is speaking about. So let's keep this in mind, actually put this up here. We can keep this in mind. I'll put that right over there on um, the Tower of Babel, you know? All right, so it says that the word Babylon now is the confusion into which the whole social order of the world, the whole social order of the world under Romanism, coming from the Greco into the Romanism, then when we see Daniel, the book of Daniel, and it speaks about these kingdoms that would come, and how Revelation speaks about these kingdoms that would come, and then when it speaks about the fourth kingdom, that verse from the other kingdoms, and the link of the Anglo-Americans, the cities, of the empires of the world, the, the, the ring of power, whatever, the empire of the world, cities of the empire, empire cities, Empire of the Cities, Empire City, that video that Ones and Ones had mentioned, that's a very interesting video because it shows the three-part division with um, the city of London, or the city of Rome probably first, the city of London second, and then the city of D.C., how they use the obelisk, and they use other ancient Egyptian and Romanist um, symbology. And this is what the Bible tells us now in Revelation. So now we're living in a world social order that is confused, and it has fallen under the GWD, the GWD, and that is the Gentile world dominion, the Gentile world dominion. So let's put this right here. We have under this and connected with this, we have the Gentile, right, which is the Goy, and then you add the Yad Mim, and you have the Goyim, which is the guys and the girls, or the Gaiim, the, the Goyim, right? But biblically speaking, it is the Gentile world dominion, right? And the Gentile world dominion 
in another sense of um, language, the Gentile world dominion would be known as so-called white supremacy. And we see a rise of this during World War II especially, even though it was an ongoing kind of a thing, but a new rise of this with the Third Reich, with the Third Reich. And see our documentary forthcoming on the swastika. Mm-hmm. On the swastika and the so-called anti-Semitism hype, we're seeing a lot in the news that a lot of um, Jews who call themselves Jews are getting attacked by people doing swastikas and stuff and saying that the Jews did 9-11, so forth and so on. Well, what about what the Bible said that those who call themselves Jews are, are, are not, but a synagogue of Satan? A connection can be made, but let's stick with the, the, the straight and narrow of the Nabim, the Nabim, the prophets right here, right? And so now here we have, it says, see, in parentheses, and if you need a copy of this, you can download it using your computer, your mobile device, so forth and so on, from lojsociety.org, and you can download the Schofield Reference Bible for free and use it on your computer or other digital mobile device. But here it says, see, times of the Gentiles. Now, this is important, too. That's why we're going to put this right here, above here. We're going to put times, quote, end quote, of the now what's interesting we have a newspaper called the New York Times and New York symbolically is that city of Babylon you see New York is symbolically that city is it's, it's the city of the world it's the capital of the world in a sense in fact before 9-11 remember walking through Manhattan and, and looked at some of these banners they had hanging and it said the city the, 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 the capital of the world or something like that it said it was said some some vainglorious kind of thing like that and then 9-11 came uh, coincidence not really but here it says Levit, uh, uh, Luke Luke 21 and 24 go to Luke 21 and 24 this is where now the prophecy of the Moshiach or of Yehoshua Geta Yesus and in Revelation chapter 16 Revelation 16, 14. Now, Isaiah 13 and 4, the same chapter 13, it gives a divine view of the, of the, what's that, welter, of the welter of warning Gentile powers. The welter of warning Gentile powers. The divine order is given in Isaiah chapter 11, chapter 11 of Isaiah. Now, Israel in her own land, the center of the divine government of the world, and the channel of divine blessing. And the Gentiles blessed in association with Israel. Now, what does it have to do with Haile Selassie, some might ask? Well, it has everything to do with his majesty and Ethiopia, because now on the other side of the ledger, you understand, in connection with... Um, put this under Haile Selassie, we have, we're going to put Ethiopia right here. Ethiopia equals, you understand, the new Israel in the sense of the Davidic monarchy, having the king, having the king to sit upon the throne of David, and both the historical and the biblical and prophetical association is concerning Ethiopia, and this is why Psalm 68:31: Princes shall come out of Egypt; Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands unto God. Is very, very significant. So we, now we have Israel in her own land, the center of the divine government of the world, because Ethiopia is part of that Ab Abrahamic covenant land. When we look at Genesis chapter 15, verse 18. See, if you follow the Jews who call themselves Jews, you're going to limit yourself to the beachfront property that they call Palestine. But if you are faithful to the, the God of Israel and you look at his word to Abraham, to Father Abraham, you see a greater territory that we can say is Afro-Asiatic, which is Afro-Shemitic, which includes the river of 
Egypt, the river of Ethiopia, that goes all the way down to South Africa. We find black African, Hebrew, righteous Africans all in that region. And we then go to the next side up to the river Euphrates. So we have the Middle East and we have North Arabia or, the, or Israel. And then we have southern part, um, Saudi Arabia and Yemen and so forth and so on. Now, the Gentiles are blessed in association with Israel. And this is what this book, particular book right here, kind of shows. This is showing the, the blessing of the Gentiles in association with Israel or Imperial Ethiopia. Now, how, what's the connection? People say, well, no, Ethiopia is Kush. Ethiopia is Ham and Kush. Well, what about what Yahweh says in Amos 9 and 7? Aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? I mean, there's more. Yes, you can point to um, Zephaniah 2 and 12. The Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword, and that is true. And we see that with the Red Terror, with the events that have happened after the godless and creeping coup against his imperial majesty or the betrayal of Ethiopia. We see those events coming to pass and still ongoing until the repentance. But what we clearly see is the blessing of the Gentiles, of the Goyim, the Anglo-Europeans, in association with the true Israel. This is why when you go into so-called Oriental studies, and the Germans are the masters of it. They're the masters of, the, of, of Oriental studies or so-called um, Eastern studies and even the linguists and, and ones like August Dillman and we have Ethiopic grammar on, you know, for, for sale and wants to get a copy of Ethiopic grammar where, where they really preserve, even for the generations, the truest and clearest context of the Ethiopic, the wealth, of, of culture. So while the Germans were researching into India and ancient cultures and Sanskrit, they also were searching into the Ethiopic. You understand? And they went into some amazing detail. In fact, some of the first translations of 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 of, of the apocryphal so called books like um it's Afa Hainok or Ethiopic Enoch, the Book of Jubilees, Little Genesis, um, other works from Ethi Ethiopic Ethiopic sources were done by the Germans, and then the British are a close um, second, Wallace Budge, so forth and so on. But there's a blessing for them, because outside of that, they would have not known the half of the story that wasn't told. So they were blessed by that knowledge and relationship. Now, anything else politically is mere Bible. Now, now understand and overstand what's being said. It says that the Gentiles, the Europeans, the Anglo-Europeans are blessed in their righteous association with Ethiopia and with the Ethiopian Hebrews. And even acknowledging who we are as Ethiopian Hebrews and not being Satans, or Satana to us, not being in opposition to us. You understand? But aiding us in the fulfillment of God's word and prophecy. Therefore, it's like those who bless Abraham are blessed. Those who curse Abraham and his seed, his black seed, are also cursed. But concerning Hala Selassie and the Tower of Babel, I want to make the connection before we even go forward um, that when we look at the NWO, let's look at the UN. Let's put the UN right here. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? We have Babel, right? Un. Babel un. Babel on. Babel un. You see the connection right there? Babel un. United Nations. This is now speaking of the city. The United Nations is a city. Everywhere the United Nations has its facilities in other countries, it's a, it's a sovereign city. It, it is a city to itself. But the connection now is the United Nations. Now you need to comprehend what's the connection with His Majesty, the League of Nations, Ethiopia during that time, what happened with the League of Nations, behind the League of Nations was the Gentiles, white supremacy, and why it was important for His Majesty to confront them. You understand His Majesty also brought within the Eurocentric and the world context and, and con conscience um, um, uh, genocide. The word genocide was coined because of His Imperial Majesty. 
not because of just the Jewish thing. Before the Jewish thing or the European Jewish thing happened, there was a genocide going on in Ethiopia because of the fascists who were allies to the Germans and they were all part of this New World Order and this Babel army. Right, but it was the League of Nations then, and later on it became the United Nations. The United Nations located in NYC in New York City. And the Twin Towers, the 11, also associated in New York City. Now, the connection with Haile Selassie. Let's, let's go forward. So anything other than a righteous relationship, which some of these images show right here, anything else than this is mere Babel. You see, it's mere Babel. The Gentiles are to be blessed, but in their righteous association with the King of Kings and his Christians or, and the Ethiopian Hebrews and the elect Rastafari. Anything other than that is mere Baba. Now, this book talks about the betrayal of Ethiopia, which was the political crucifixion of his imperial majesty. So when we read the speeches of his majesty, brothers and sisters, especially the ones that he gives, the dire warnings, that he gave to the United Nations and all of the nations, all of the Gentiles, all of the world. This is what it says, that God would visit all nations, that he would visit all nations, but he bore witness to what? The message of Christ, which is symbolically, we could say, the message of the cross, the message of Christ. For a time they listened. Some even were moved to do good because of that message of Hala Selassie. But then we have the betrayal. In the 1970s, in 1974, then we have the Cold War between East and West and all these covert operations. And, and we have the forming now of this confusion where we're at presently today. Now, secondly, it speaks about Revelation chapter 14, verses 8 to 11, Revelation chapter 16, verse 19. The Gentile world system is in view in connection with Armageddon. So it's the Gentile, what's the Gentile world system? White supremacy or the Anglo-Europeanism. We could put Anglo-European. In fact, let's put that right here in the world domination. We have the Anglo the, and the Europeans, right? And all we need to do is look at Africa, look at slavery, look at what, what's happening in other parts of the world. So the Gentile world system is in view in connection with what? Armageddon. But what does Armageddon mean? Once again, we have to get into meanings, the proper Afro-Shemitic etymology. Armageddon comes from the Hebrew har or Megidio, har Megidio, Megidio. And har means mountain, and um, gedio, in a sense, would mean um, an assembly, mount of assembly. It was a mount where all are assembled. When his majesty spoke to the League of Nations, in Geneva, Swiss Agar, in other words, in, Ge in Geneva, Switzerland, that was one demonstration of it. Then we have the next speech from 60, I think it's 63, where he speaks about 27 years ago, how he spoke before another gathering of these Gentiles, another gathering of you all. And he says how his words in the first instance in the League of Nations went unheeded. And now he gives a dire warning again in 1963 and, and thereafter, and this is what we have in Bob Marley's war song, you know what I'm saying, until the philosophy which hold one nation superior, another inferior, one race, and so forth and so on. But that's also very important in the full context. That part was just part of a greater message. And he goes into very prophetic details, and if we would look at what he warned, and what eventually happened, and how removing him off of the scene was able to also remove his righteous Christ man agenda, the godly righteous agenda off of the world scene, and then the evildoers came in to this particular tower. Now, we know in our expanded teaching how Genesis chapter 11, where they demonized Nimrod, it's no, it's, it's no um, coincidence that they demonized Nimrod. Why? Because Nimrod was an Ethiopian. Nimrod was a, see, the story people get of Nimrod is not what the Bible says. It's what Freemasonry says. It's, it's the, the spin that Freemasonry and the Gentile world system has put on that man, Nimrod. 
see, if they were able to succeed, they would go on and they would put his majesty in the same sense as Nimrod. On the outside, they would demonize him to everybody, religiously speaking. But on the inside, they would look at him as a great builder, as a, as a grand type of an architect. And this is actually how they view his imperial majesty. But they recognize how dangerous for their scheme of things is that message if we, if humanity, really receives it and acts on it. That is where the confrontation basically happens. So while in Genesis or while in Revelation chapter 17, the reference is to the apostate Christianity destroyed by the nations headed up under the beast and the false prophet. So understand, understand what we have here. We have the apostate church, and apostate means to fall away. They fall away from the biblical teaching and from the, and from the testimony of Christ. What his imperial majesty reminded us and them of was the true testimony and gave us a true example. In other words, both in word did his majesty speak as well as in deed that corresponds with the testimony of Christ. But it says that there will be an apostate Christianity, and this has crept into Ethiopia, even into the Ethiopian church. But the, the apostate Christianity is talking about more of Rome, destroyed by the nations, destroyed by the Goyim, destroyed by white supremacy. They've, they start to destroy, you understand, Christianity, and they're destroying even the sense of so-called the church, Christianity, and Christ. And they are headed up under the beast, under what's known biblically as the beast, Daniel 17 and 8, Revelation 19 and 20. Now, Smyrna Angel made the comment and had quoted from Revelation, and this is the same area of Scripture that a diligent study now gives us the full picture of. In Isaiah, the political Babylon is in view. Wait, wait, hold on for a moment. You mean there's, a, there's kind of a, a religious Babylon, it seems like? There's a spiritual kind of Babylon, and then there's a political kind of Babylon, and there's the, and there's the military part of Babylon also. We see a lot of examples of that even going back to the 60s and 70s. But it says in Isaiah, the political Babylon is in view, literally, as to the then existing city, that they had a city then. This is what, what's really behind Babylon going against Babylon. That's what Christ said. As Satan be divided against himself, then his kingdom also fall. But they, had, they went out to, in other words, the spiritual Babylon, mystery part of it, the, the political part of it, went out against the historical Babylon, the historical Babylon or, or Iraq, and how is that going? So symbolically, as to the times of the Gentiles, so as a symbol, so in that time it actually spoke to then existing Babylon city over in Iraq, but as a symbol is speaking to the what? The times of the Gentiles the times of white supremacy, the times of the Anglo-European. You know when it says how Satan was cast down and it says that the, the, the Satan, the Satanat, they had a limited, they had a limited amount of time and that they will go out in war against the remnant and we see this increase in the war, covert and overt warfare and we look at the number of human beings who have been massacred and killed for all sort of political so-called keeping the peace. It should not be so amazing what the scripture is talking about. In the revelation, both the symbolical, political, and the symbolical religious Babylon are in view. Now it breaks it down to us that in the book of Revelation, it's both the symbolical, the symbol of the political Babylon, and the symbol of the religious Babylon that are in view. For they both are alike under the tyranny. They both are the same thing under the tyranny of the beast, under the tyranny of the aure, under the tyranny of the beast. Now, religious Babylon, notice this, pay attention, and then you'll understand what's going on in the whole religious thing nowadays in the world, that the religious Babylon is destroyed by the political Babylon. Satan be divided against us. So the religious Babylon is destroyed by the political Babylon. So look at the politics and religion and politics and, and, and um, other, other signs in that. Revelation chapter 17, verse 16. Political Babylon 
right, by the appearing of the Lord, according to Revelation chapter 19, verse 21.